About three out of ten Angus-type cattle reach the quality standards that are set by the certified Angus beef brand. Any chance of qualifying begins with marketing to one of the brand's many partners. To get cattle into the certified Angus beef brand, the first step is they must be sold to a licensed packer. We work with about 85% of the packing industry today, and so once they've gone through a licensed packer, they'll be identified as Angus type, and that's predominantly black hided. And then after that, they're evaluated by the USDA grading system to evaluate them for the 10 carcass-based specifications. Since most of them do not qualify, it's important to understand what keeps them out. The factors limiting acceptance into the certified Angus beef brand is first and foremost inadequate marbling. 92% of the cattle that don't make it into the brand don't have modest zero marbling or greater. After that, excessive ribeye area, having more than 16 square inches of ribeye uh, results in about 11% of the cattle being excluded. And third, over 1,050 pounds, 9% of the cattle get excluded for that reason. In the bigger picture, it helps to have the cattle genetics and health management that contribute to success. The mantra that a calf should never have a bad day to make it into the certified Angus beef brand still holds true. The unique aspect of the stalker period is there's a tremendous amount of flexibility to ensure those good days occur. We can feed them a variety of different ingredients. We can manage them a variety of different ways. So long as they're gaining over about two pounds a day consistently during that period from weaning till about 825 pounds. Why 825 pounds? Marbling development occurs prior to weaning, but we really start to fill up those cells that we developed early on once that calf hits about 800, 850 pounds or 67% of mature weight. Most ranchers wean calves much lighter than that, sustaining a popular notion that it's up to the feed yard to add quality. But it's more like passing the baton in a relay. The idea that we can just add marbling at the feedlot phase would not be true, and that that calf's genetic potential for marbling is set at conception, and we provide adequate nutrition and management to allow that marbling to develop from the day it's born all the way through to the feed yard. I'm Bob Cervera.